Hello everybody and welcome back to episode 11 of the Space Engineers Survive With Me tutorial series as our drone disappears over the horizon heading back to the drill rig base we are going to discuss building a little zone to launch and land the Rinkadon shuttle that we built last time so we've got it over here and this bad boy is ready to rock and go to space but but we want a good spot to park this thing, keep it safe, and uh, much like the rover, have a little bit of a hangar bay. So I'm thinking, looking at our little setup here, I'm thinking this is a pretty good spot for it. So that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to go grab some steel plates and some interior plates. Maybe some construction components as well for those like bridges and things like that. And then we're going to start building this. Now, something we need to think about is we want to get cargo and ores down from space. So, primarily we're going to be bringing ores back with us. So, this is a good location because we can pipe it into this bit. And then it will place the ores into the refinery. If we go and find, say, some uranium, which would be really, really useful. <laughs> um, or... We need to, uh, sorry, and we also need to fill it with fuel, so we need hydrogen. So currently ice is coming into here, so we need a place to store this hydrogen and also a place to refine it into hydrogen with an O2 generator. So to be honest with you, a good way to do that is actually underground. Hydrogen tanks are explosive and if they take too much damage they will explode and deal a lot of damage to the rest of the base. So actually having underground hydrogen storage is not the worst idea in the world. Um, and all we'd need to do for that is potentially put a bit of a ladder shaft here, go down underground and then we can put our hydrogen storage there. That's actually what I'm going to do in this case because I do not want to accidentally have one of the drones um, bump into the hydrogen tank and then we're going to have a very uh, difficult time explaining why that happened. So. Yeah, I'm going to quickly clear some of the ground beneath the large cargo container. Um, I'm probably going to put the entrance here. I'm going to use the drill and as mentioned right clicking will remove a lot of voxels and not give you anything back in return. I'm going to turn my suit light on and I'm going to create enough space down here for us to make an underground hydrogen storage facility. Alright guys, so I'll show you quickly what I've done. So, just below here, you come down, I'll put a ladder down here. I've put three O2H2 generators, so these will take ice and convert them into hydrogen and oxygen. In this case, we just need hydrogen. Pipe the round here, and then we've got a large hydrogen tank here, which is going to be all we need to store the hydrogen for this kind of base. And then I've got piping down there, which leads out here. And then I can connect it up. I've put a conveyor junction here. Connect these two up. And then put a connector here. So when the shuttle comes back from space and docks here. It will unload all of the ores that it's collected. And then it will also refuel itself. Using the pipes connected to the hydrogen tank. So I'm just going to go and get all this built. Which is going to take uh, a little while. Because the hydrogen tank is a beefy boy. And will take a while for it to be built. Um, we have got the cargo drone actually on its way back, which is lovely to see. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go get this built real quick. Now, if you've not done like sorters in your base or what have you, then you can probably just hook this all up to one system. Um, I'm keeping it on separate systems because, again, it's pretty useful for scalability and things like that. Can't wait to see this cargo drone come in. A bit more ice for us. Oh, here comes the cargo drone. Oh. I want to see this. <laughs> I'm not going to shoot out this guy. <laughs> Stay back. I just want to make sure uh, everything goes smoothly here. Oh, I can't control it. There she is, the Chariot, as I uh, aptly name her after repeatedly calling her the Chariot in the other video. 
I don't know why it does that, but it sort of sits there for a few seconds and then it spurs to life. Ooh. Actually, I better get out of the way here. Oh, chariot of fire. Just getting the conveyors built down there now and uh, we'll be ready to rock. Here she comes. Look at Mars up there. You can see the alien planet in the distance as well. Titan, Europa. Hopefully, it's full of lovely ice. Perfect. Have you got ice? It has got ice. Lovely. Get off before it takes off again. There we go. That was that was quick. <laughs> go on. See you later. You are free to leave. It does uh, tend to do a bit shilly shallying, but uh, yeah, no, it's nice to see it working. Anyway, let's continue welding up. Just doing these conveyor pipes now. Alright, so I've got the O2H2 generators built. They are filled up. <laughs> Come on. They're filled up with ice. There you go. And now the hydrogen tank is slowly filling up. As you can see, we're on 1.3%, which is lovely. So now let's focus on building a hangar for our shuttle here. Okay, so what we're going to do next is put a bit of an outline together for the landing pad here. So I probably want it to be... another one this way. So somewhere like, like there. That's where we'll have the connector. And we'll also be able to walk into the area straight up the stairs to get the mining pod as well. Um, so we can have the connector here. This could be where it lands. We're just going to have to remove some of the ground beneath these blocks here, which is fine. Yeah, so we'll probably do a junction there and then link those two up. So, like that. And then place that there. Cool. And then for the doors on this, I'm actually going to use these hangar door blocks. Now, there's a few different ones you can use. You've got the normal one, vanilla, and then you've got this one, which is the warfare hangar door. The warfare hangar door, which has a window. And then the second warfare hangar door, which is a different style. So there's, there's a few different ones you can use here. I'm actually just going to go for the default ones here. And hangar doors will go up by two blocks. So this will now be this high, as you can see I can't build here. And that will be the garage where we can park our little space shuttle. Um, so, oh, I've fallen in the hole. <laughs> So not too dissimilar to what we did with um, with the rover hangar. I'm now just going to build a little bit of an area for this bad boy. So that should be more than enough. Build up the corners. We're going to have an entrance back here. Which will allow us to either go up to the mining ship or we can come inside and view the shuttle. I probably I want this to be kind of flat. So I might actually just leave it like this. Like a very flat looks like a spaceship hangar, doesn't it? Obviously, you don't have to put masses of thought into it. Again, this will protect it from lightning, protect it from seeing other players. Uh, other, sorry, other players having a little spy at it. 
Um, but overall, for the most part, this is just something that is visual. Um, which I think what I'm going to do here, I might just do some simple structuring like this. The reason I'm using half blocks on the side here is because I want to get some windows in this thing. Just to let a bit of light in. You know? Just trying to think what sized windows we've got. We've actually got these 2x3s, which are... Eh, it's a bit much. We've got the 3x3s. Three um, we've got the 1x2s, which we could, we could use here. Because I kind of feel like... I mean, we could have like the whole side open, but that might be a bit much. So I might just have those like four blocks open. Just so we can see our little ship inside. Um, and then up top we can also have windows as well. I like windows. People often forget about windows. But windows really are a useful part of building. Letting in some natural light can make all the difference. So I'm going to dot some windows around like this. And then before we go a block further, let's make sure. Yeah, easily. Easily fits inside. Um, that's pretty much it. Right. Well, you know, you know what time it is. Time to get welded. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to go and <laughs> get all this welded up, and I'll be back shortly. Now, you'll notice when you're building this that the blast doors are incredibly expensive. Blast doors are incredibly resilient as well. One missile will just remove a single blast door. So these are really, really tough, um, and some of the most durable blocks in the game, actually. So having these on the front of your base or using them as hangar doors on ships... You can even use them as, like, battering rams on ships. is an extremely good idea, and which is why we also use blast doors on the bumper for the rover. Because they are, as I just said, pretty much uh, indestructible. And they will take one hell of a hit before they actually break. So, that's why they cost so much. Alright, welcome back everyone. I've been busy. And here we go, here's the hangar. Doesn't it look cool? Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is just quickly paint down the middle, that little grey stripe, and you know the drill, you know the drill. <laughs> We're going to go with blue, that is this playthrough's colour, so I'm going to colour the outside in blue, and then we're going to do a couple of white stripes here as well. Just down the sides here. Nothing too fancy. Just keep it... Oh, there we, go, there we go. Keep it nice and simple. There we go. And then for the hangar doors, I'm also going to paint the middle one that light grey as well. So you see we've got big windows in here. Lots of room. I moved the connector one back as well. Um, and then for the final touch, we're going to add a button panel. Now, this is going to allow us to control the hangar doors, but we're also going to use it to refuel the cargo ship and configure it as well. I'm just figuring out where the best place to put this is. thinking probably about here. So if we go into the control panel, find the hangar doors... save them into a group. I'm going to turn off show block in terminal. Then set up actions. We're going to find that group and open close. So now we can shut the hangar doors. Check it out. Awesome. And then we can head round back. We can open the hangar up. I'm also going to quickly 
put a couple of lights in here as well. Oh, just to help us see at night. Put those in the roof there. And then we'll increase the radius. Put that on one and one, and we'll call it shuttle hangar lights. Turn that off in the terminal as well, because as I mentioned, the terminal is getting pretty uh, pretty full now. So we can turn the lights off. Save a bit of fuel. Um, and then we're going to name this connector shuttle pad connector and then we're going to find the connector block switch lock awesome now we can actually bring our little ship in here, I'm just wondering if we want some lights on the actual on the sides here I'm thinking we do, you know. But these will be pad lights. So for pad lights, I normally put them on like an orange and drop the radius right down. Just so you can see where you're landing at night. And then we can bring the rinkered on backwards here onto the landing pad. Perfect. And then if we press this button here, which is stockpile on our G menu, which we set up last time, we should start for, well, we're, we're at 99%, but yeah, we'll go to 100%. <laughs> so we'll leave those on stockpile so this thing's fully fueled. Um, and then we've got enough room to actually get around this ship here and we can, we can do bits of work on it as well. Now, there are still a few more things we can do here. Um, one thing I'm actually going to do is I'm going to use a sensor. I'm going to use the automation sensor here. You can use just the regular sensor block. But we're going to set up a feature where the hangar door will automatically open itself when the ship comes in range. So if we just weld this up, and then we click into the control panel. If we go to the info tab, click show sensor field range. And then we go to the sensor. We go show on hood. You'll see that we can actually see this cube around us right now. So if we just drop that down, you can actually see that extending. If we do this, you can actually see it moving in and out there. And at the moment, this is the size of field range we've got. But basically, we want to put it just... <laughs> right. I'm going to have to fill this in. Give me one second. Yeah, so we want it so that this field is just in front of the hangar door here. So we're going to increase... Oh, I think I placed it the wrong way around. Yeah, so it's got arrows facing up there. So we want the bottom extent to go down like that. Yep, that's plenty. And we want the top extent. We want that to come right down. So it's just like that. And then the backwards extent, we want that to come to zero. And the front extent to 5. And that's the perfect zone, actually. I'm going to leave the noise on. But we're going to actually set it to not detect players. So if we come in here, detect players off. Detect small ships on. And detect neutral off. Detect enemy off. 
So basically, when a small grid comes in range of this sensor field now, it will trigger. As you can hear, I'm inside of it now and it's not triggering because we've disabled players. And then we want to trigger a timer block. So I'm going to quickly build a timer block. Looks like we've got a new version of the timer block as well, which I didn't know we had. Um, doesn't really matter too much where you put it. Um, I'm probably just going to pop it like here. And when this is triggered, we're going to have a delay of about five seconds. And then it's going to open close the hangar doors. So if we get the sensor, we'll do this shuttle hangar door sensor. Set up actions. Start the timer. Let's see it in action. So if we hop into the Rinkadon. Just fly out of range. You'll see it will automatically close the doors. And then if we're coming back. It will automatically open the doors for us as well. I might want to put that delay down to about 3 seconds. I think 5 seconds is maybe a bit too much. But you get the gist. You could also just set this timer block to repeatedly close the hangar door every 3 seconds. Um, and then the sensor will just open it, um, or like every five, ten seconds. But you can also do it this way, and that's the way I'm going to do it. Um, but yeah, so there we have a simple hanger for the shuttle. Looks pretty decent. Uh, we just need to put a bit of a back on it, but um, I'm just going to leave it as it is for now. Maybe need to creeple up the sides a little bit. But overall, overall, sorry, it fits in quite nicely with our little settlement here. So next episode. Now that we've got the shuttle fueled, we have a hangar storage facility for it. We're actually going to take this thing up to space and I'll show you how to do that. If you guys enjoyed this video, please like, comment and subscribe to support the channel. And as always, take care, everybody.